My background uh, started with astronomy, uh, mapping the galaxy in radio and infrared, and then went into space engineering. And I worked on space station design for NASA for eight years. Um, let's see, is this working? No, it's not, okay. Uh, so one project I was involved in recently is a, uh, with some artists in New Zealand, uh, is a project to visualize and you sonify the data for space debris. Uh, so this is uh, some of our, in the background in this picture, the, uh, some of the parameters I provided and some of the trajectories we calculated. Uh, let me back this away. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, Radek uh, created a sonification of the uh, data and we visualization, and so this is a little, uh, 40 second clip of it. So the objects uh, in orbit near, uh, that were overhead in Wellington, uh, New Zealand are illustrated and then uh, Reddick made a uh, uh, translated the motions into uh, audio representation that uh, with a bank of speakers around so you could hear the different objects moving through the space. But this was only a small sample of 10 objects out of the 43,000 that are up there that uh, we're tracking. So, um, But one other, uh, I wanted to talk about a couple other aspects of, of art and space and one aspect is important role in the early parts of uh, space engineering design. Uh, for example, this, uh, this is the early conceptual design for the landing on the moon with uh, uh, John Huboat uh, designing this path of, of rendezvous in lunar orbit and, uh, uh, and this, the concept for the lunar lander it was started as this little uh, wooden model. And so there was uh, just early uh, conceptual art was determining the entire future of the program and uh, uh, even though people are um, always think of the you know the, the uh, fancy uh, engineering that goes into spacecraft design it really is uh, starts from the very earliest concepts. Um, I worked on the con conceptual design for the space station and this is some of the five redesigns I worked on, and, and also this plan for how a space station could help uh, uh, return to the moon, building a lunar, uh, uh, a lunar uh, orbiter facility. Um, and I don't know if you can see, uh, in, yeah, the, down this here, this little tiny porch down here, it's, uh, it, it was actually a consequence of my manager uh, needing to provide the White House with a, a uh, a lower keel version of the space station design in the last minute and uh, unfortunately my manager couldn't operate the photocopy machine well enough and was trying to cover up these things and managed to get a little slip of, uh, of the uh, part of the design sticking down there and, and for a couple years uh, we always included it in the detailed design and I just had this picture of these astronauts uh, risking their lives to build this part and uh, wondering it all traced back to a photocopy error. So, so you can see how uh, little bits of the artwork can actually have influenced the future quite a bit. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a piece that I worked on with the early concepts for the tunnel to connect the US and the Russian parts. And so I always feel a little um, ownership about these little tunnels, that's why. I, I like to see them in the movie Gravity and things like that. So there's my little tunnel. Oh boy! <laughs> so um, there it is, uh, sticking out on the front of the, st of the station. This is the station as it looks like now. Um, the uh, we also had a failure of imagination. Um, uh, it's it's almost like you imagine an an art gallery and you just think of an empty space and you forget the fact that people are going to bring bring artwork into the art, work, art gallery or something like that. So all the experiments that have been going on for 20 years on the space station have really added up to a, a tangled mess. So uh, 
So I wanted, to, uh, continuing on the theme of how the artwork influences uh, space activities, um, I would say that this one painting really determined the U.S. space program for the next 60 years. Um, it has a space station and a space shuttle and a space telescope, and this this early design and early painting uh, from Brown made in in uh, 1952 in the Collier Magazine. Um, uh, all of the $350 billion worth of programs followed from just this one concept. And so, um, so uh, that's why it, I think it's very interesting to, to look at the concepts that are out there right now because people grow up with these and, and, and stay inspired. Um, this is uh, some of the space settlement draw, uh, paintings from the 1970s and 80s. Uh, and for example, uh, if you, if you listen to Jeff Bezos about why he's spending a billion dollars a year on building rockets, he's really inspired by this painting. So, so if you uh, if you want to understand where he's going uh, and what what uh, all the activity that that Blue Origin is doing, uh, this is a, a painting from an uh, interior of a of a lunar base where the the reduced gravity means that you can actually fly. And, and you don't need stairs between floors because you can uh, jump from one floor to another. And so, uh, but this is one of the few cases of, few uh, illustrations of what a, uh, a city on, on the moon might look like. I, would, I, I think there are maybe three or four. And so it's um, the concepts that people have can actually really change the future, I think. And if that's one area that if, you're, if you wanted to be involved in this, uh, movement of humanity into space, or if you, you shared that vision, if you want to uh, uh, come up with the concepts and, and designs of, of the interiors, it's, you can change things like that. And this is uh, Elon Musk's vision of, of large numbers of people on Mars that uh, he has organized in his entire country, uh, company about. Uh, that, that vehicle that on the left there that uh, the, the spaceship that can carry 100 people to Mars, um, they plan to be testing it, test hopping it next year. But I never trust his schedules, but anyway, but, it, but still it's amazing that they're actually building the parts of this right now. And people you know, are using things like, this is a visualization of a space hotel, and I would say that this company's only asset really is this painting. I mean, it's, and, uh, and so they're raising uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to build this hotel uh, based on this painting. And so it, it's the, the space art and visualization is absolutely critical to whether or not these projects happen. And so uh, my, one of my favorite areas is asteroids, and I think we need, are desperately in need of better visualization and, and imagery concerning asteroids. Uh, this is one that actually shows the asteroids in their true brightness. So if you see that giant dark uh, Matilda um, Alice asteroid, that really is that dark. Uh, and, and so there's, um, in fact, the comets when they're, when they're not emitting uh, gases are really dark objects too. But uh, I'm just gonna look at this one uh, near-Earth asteroid, uh, Tutatis, and this is my vision of next year bringing it to the festival um, to make a big splash in the art world. Um, but the, the potential is to uh, imagine what you can do with this raw material. And, and, uh, and right now, this is one of the few images of transforming one of these giant rocks into uh, a habitat for people. But it, we're right at the stage in the next uh, uh, five years or so, where these visions will will transform the uh, what what happens in the future in, in the solar system. And so this is just a I'll just end with a note that I used to be interested in this when there were we knew about 12 Earth crossing asteroids, but but now we know about 18,363 of which 50 were discovered this week. So uh, there's a lot of raw material out there for future uh, art in space, so that's it.